Trinity has always been a university with a very large global outlook. We have alumni scattered all over the world. We have a growing number of students coming from countries outside of Europe and a significant number of our faculty who come from outside of Ireland. This year, we have over 1,800 non-EU students on campus from over 80 countries. And the number of partnerships we have with the leading universities all over the world has permitted exchange of students, joint research with the leading universities globally. Over the last three years, Trinity has welcomed over 250 Brazilian students on the Science Without Borders programme. The success of this has led to deepening of our strong research links with Brazil. Okay guys, so I'm going to be showing you this column here, which is a Cephadex column. Can you switch off there, please? I think that the work Trinity is doing is brilliant. I haven't seen any other university trying to achieve such an amazing international collaboration in terms of the scientific scenario. Trinity really goes around trying to find different partners in different countries and that really enhances the quality of the really high level science already performed in Ireland. Uh, the international aspect was really important because, you know, I'm not from Ireland and then being from Brazil, I have collaboration still with Brazilian universities and I also am a visiting professor in Asia. And what you're left with is this yellow color because the chlorophyll is gone. I can either go to Brazil and Kazakhstan myself and go with the scientists over there that I work with hunting for plants and collecting them and bringing over, or I can have people there collecting the plants. But what's really important is I have students both in Brazil and in Kazakhstan. So they are PhD students that I supervise from here, and they go collecting the plants, they prepare the extracts, and they come over to Ireland and work in my lab. What I would love would be to have an outcome where I could come up with molecules that can benefit populations in South America that uh, they don't have any access to primary health. So if something comes about to find a plant that they could use as a medicinal plant without needing any processing or any preparation or anything like that, so that would be my best contribution to, to science. Right, so this is the sum rule that I told you about, where we can actually use to uh, obtain a number of properties uh, that we can obtain with these uh, green functions. One of the great advantages of having such a strong network of collaborators is that, you know, I may need, my group may need some sort of expertise that we do not have at this moment in time. Maybe I can actually send one of my PhD students to some part of the, of the, of the globe so that they will actually be able to spend some time there, learn that technique and bring that back. As I said, once we have these expressions, we can manipulate that to obtain a number of quantities. So I think I was 12 or 13 when I fell in love with science and always loved maths. And then as soon as I started taking physics, and all of a sudden that clicked because I could see, I could use maths, you know, to solve problems, you know, so, but not, I'm not talking about textbook problems, I'm talking about real life problems. That's what I try to convey to my students, you know, this passion or solving problems. We are actually experts in solving problems. Our problem solving skills are second to none. So what I do is educate. I'm trying to teach people how to be innovators and I do that through design, engineering design. So we look at trying to tackle large scale grand challenges in an international business context. So we have a network currently of 23 partners in five continents, I believe. So we're in North America, South America, Europe, um, North Asia, South Asia, and Australia. So there's a, a pretty broad range of collaborators all around the globe. It's a pretty unique um, offering from, I think, both the student's perspective and from um, the industry perspective. So from the student's perspective, uh, there's a lot of travel, for example. All of our students will have two trips to the US and then maybe one further trip to uh, their partner university. Their partner university will come over here. Um, so we've had people in Brazil, we've had Brazilians here, we've had Germans here, we've been in Germany. Uh, we've had uh, Americans here, we've been in America, etc. go! <laughs> Partnership with Singapore Institute of Technology delivers programs in physiotherapy, occupational therapy, diagnostic radiography and radiation therapy. The programs are delivered in Singapore and students spend six weeks in Dublin as part of an overseas immersion program. Kick out hard and back again. And here we have 
when he kicks out, that's his knee extension. Pulling back in, that's his knee flexion. This is a one-year programme for students from Singapore. These are occupational therapists, physiotherapists, radiographers or radiation therapists. And they have all done a three-year diploma in Singapore. And this programme is um, a one-year programme that builds on that three-year programme. But it's actually interesting to see that. Look what he was doing recently and he has got, it's got less and less. As with any travel, this broadens the students' horizons. Students would talk um, following completion of the programme that they have developed their clinical skills, they have de developed their clinical reasoning skills, they have developed their critical analysis skills, but have, they've also developed other things in terms of their um, attitude to other cultures and to how things are done in other countries. Indeed, this is also a two-way process because a lot of our clinical sites We'll talk about how much they have benefited from having the students on placement and how much they have enjoyed having students from another country on site in, within their clinical units. It's, it's an opportunity to see how radiographers practice in another, in another country. I think it will definitely have a long-term effect on them in that they've visited an overseas country, they've seen what it's like, they they'll be itching to get back to that same country and then again go and explore the rest of the world because now you've opened that sort of oyster and you're allowing them to experience this. <laughs> I learn from you, you learn from me. And then we go and take what we've learned and teach others what we've learned. So we keep the cycle going. So recently we had a student come across from Hong Kong University to the lab, a PhD student, and he did research looking at hepatitis C and he found a new mechanism by which hepatitis C actually suppresses uh, antiviral activity. And he produced and published a recent review article uh, that has between Trinity and Hong Kong University. We are very excited about our groundbreaking partnership with Tapar University in India. Students spend the first two years in Tapar and the following two years in Trinity studying engineering and computer science. Over the past four years, I've been on six global relations delegations to India, including Chennai, Kolkata, Bangalore, Mumbai and Delhi. I've engaged with over 50 high schools and universities and have given guest lectures and keynotes, for instance, at Presidency University in Kolkata, St. Xavier's College in Mumbai, Jesus and Mary College in New Delhi, and most recently at Ashoka University, where we're hoping to develop and deepen our partnership, building on the Memorandum of Understanding, giving guest lectures and invited seminars there, and developing a student exchange program with them. I think the biggest advantage is in terms of the global exposure I'm able to get once I moved here. With Trinity being amongst the world's top 100 universities, it has state-of-the-art facilities and uh, I believe here they make us do some real-world projects and that adds value to what I'm doing uh, and makes me more industry ready. <laughs> Atlantic Philanthropies is giving almost 140 million to Trinity College Dublin and the University of California, San Francisco to establish the Global Brain Health Institute, a groundbreaking initiative that aims to tackle the looming dementia epidemic and improve health and dementia care worldwide. The Global Brain Health Institute is uh, a network led by Trinity College Dublin and University of California, San Francisco which is going to train over 15 years, 600 leaders in a new field of dementia prevention. The project came about because Atlantic Philanthropies have invested very heavily in the whole area of neuroscience, uh, aging uh, in Trinity, but also have invested similarly at UCSF. And for that reason, uh, University of California, San Francisco, UCSF and Trinity have been brought together uh, to lead on this project. And the goal of setting up this institute is to train world leaders in the whole area of dementia prevention. At the moment, about 30% of the cases of dementia are preventable with existing knowledge. You know, if you got people exercising, if you got people taking good diet, if you stop people smoking, if you reduce the type 2 diabetes, uh, if you reduce depression and stress, you, would, you, could, you could get rid of a whole lot of 
um, dementia. So even with existing knowledge, we have to find ways of trying to get the kind of lifestyle changes or behavioural changes that could produce these benefits. Uh, this was a project that we set up uh, at the War Crimes Tribunal in Tanzania that was trying the perpetrators of the Rwandan genocide that occurred in 1994 when over 800,000 people were murdered within the course of 100 days. But when they set up these trials, very much modeled on the Nuremberg trials, uh, they really had no model for trial procedures. So it was a fascinating uh, experience and also a real challenge uh, for, the, for the courts to be able to see how when you bring lawyers from all around the world and judges and you throw them in the courtroom, how do they develop and adapt to this new form of trial procedure. We had uh, a number of students, both uh, coming from Yale, uh, Georgetown, and NYU, that were funded and participated in the project. And we also had Trinity students come down. I think the, the uh, value of that was not only for the individual students watching these historic trials, but it was also that they were in con contact with each other. Uh, and particularly, what I noted was the students, the Trinity students that engaged in this project ended up with very interesting international careers and these are very competitive uh, areas to work in and I, the experience that they had uh, at this moment in time I think really helped them later on when they were out there on the job market. Real solidarity comes through developing knowing of the other person. That comes from engaging with with other people. It comes from sitting down with other people. It comes from having discussions which are uncomfortable to all of us. It's not just about understanding the world around you, it's about affecting it and changing it and hopefully doing that for the better and that's pretty stimulating. You bring me a problem, I'll transform that problem into a mathematical problem and I'll solve it and then give that solution back to you. As a sociologist, my role in Trinity's new foundation program has been to coordinate the social sciences input. And this is a great way for international students to interact with Irish students and for Irish students to learn so much more about the cultures and religions of our international community. Well, I think one of the, the really interesting aspects of this work and what's exciting about it is the international dimension. And that, that not only provides an interesting and fertile ground for research, but it challenges the way that we think ourselves. The greatest part, I think, about coming here has just been opening up kind of, I guess, a new world in a lot of ways because it's such an international experience for me coming from the U.S. I wanted to take advantage of, of the four years and, you know, expand as much as I could and learn about different cultures. So we've actually graduated 54 students from our course in the past three years and they're effectively ambassadors for Trinity all around the world now and they're working in research, industry and medicine. They just want to get out there and finish whatever time they need to do paying back universities, and then get out into the world and explore. I think you can see we have a thriving cosmopolitan campus with students and staff from all over the world. Students who've had experiences in universities overseas and have come back to share those experiences in the classroom here. We are also delivering a number of programmes overseas, allowing us to reach communities and students in parts of the world we would not have been able to before.